On this episode of Speed News, we cover how not to have an epic fail during your annual technical inspection, NASA's new Spec Z series, which daily driver we think would be a great track car, and GoPro Heroes Move of the Month. Welcome to the April 2012 edition of Speed News. I'm your host, Rob Kreider. With me along my side is John Lindsay, NASA's Chief Divisional Director, and our guest host this week is Jeremy Crissette, NASA's Div uh, Director of Sponsorship. How are you doing, Jeremy? I'm doing great. How are you, Rob? Outstanding. How about yourself, John? How are things treating you? Oh, real good, Rob. Real good. Well, you know, every race car driver that's involved in NASA has to go through the process of the annual tech inspection each year. And that's very important because really that's the kind of rules that keep us all safe out there on the racetrack. I had the pleasure of taking two cars over to Seven's Only Shop in Button Willow. One of them passed with flying colors, the other one failed miserably. Now, John, I've seen you uh, face down, ass up in a lot of race cars doing these annual inspections. Tell me some of your uh, horror stories about some of the things you found. Well, I'll tell you, Rob, some of the things that uh, you know I have found are cars that don't have welds done correctly, belts installed incorrectly, seats, a whole multitude of things. Uh, and fortunately, I, I recently did a car, uh, it's a very nice Audi S4. Uh, it was a former uh, street car for one of the uh, well-known Audi tuning shops and has been turned into a time trial car. And they'd had a very nice cage put in, but unfortunately some of the things had been done wrong and I caught them. Uh, we do have some photos here, guys. Uh, the first one that I have up is a photo just of something that commonly gets missed with these cars. And with a lot of uh, seat belts, they have the little uh, tang there uh, where you can clip them and unclip them really quickly. And in this case, uh, they just had not put a little piece of safety wire or a cotter pin right through that clip, and you can see it there in the photo. And what that does is it allows the belt to release, God forbid, in a big crash, something like that. That belt could release and come right out. So in this case, I told the car owner, go ahead and uh, stick a piece of safety wire through there where he could... Uh, get that signed off. Um, the next photo is actually something from the same car and it shows you how a really good way to mount your uh, submarine belts, your uh, fifth and sixth point, sometimes sixth and seventh point, the, the big uh, you know, crotch belts we call them uh, to be a little bit crash. Uh, those uh, go into the floor pan, but sometimes the floor pan metal is not very uh, thick. So in this case, they'd put some nice pieces of metal in there and sandwich them in there, nice wide pieces to kind of spread that load. So this was something on that car that was uh, actually done correctly. Uh, so our next photo that we look at is another thing I commonly catch. Uh, it's a hole in the firewall. And what that does is it can allow all kinds of nasty things, you know, say the motor explodes, uh, oil, uh, gas, whatever, and it can come into the driver's compartment. So in this case, that was a simple fix, just a couple of plates around this one hole in the firewall. They're good to go. Uh, and then another thing that we see in cars that have fuel cells. So fuel cells have to have a certain kind of approval rating and often uh, folks will not have any evidence to show us that the cell is within its uh, lifespan which is five years or seven years of recertification. So in this case you can see they've built a really nice enclosure for the cell and also had the paperwork sitting right there where I could uh, look at it right away and that was really wonderful to see that. So that made my job easier in this case. Uh, and then the next thing you'll see is uh, at NASA we require certain uh, tubing sizes for our roll cages. And the only way to really tell is to drill a hole. Well, you could tell with a really high-end sonic tester, uh, but we don't have a lot of those floating around out in the field. So what the rules mandate is a small 3 16 usually hole where you can stick a caliper into that hole and be able to tell what the tubing size is on that roll cage to make sure it's legal. Uh, in this case, very nicely drilled hole right in the main hoop there, easy to get to for me. So this car passed that one with flying colors, but, and there's always a but, uh, the last photo shows a critical flaw that actually caused this car to fail. Uh, and in this case, we always require 360 degree welds around all the tubes that are there in the roll cage. And this one had a large section of the weld missing so it could possibly fail. So this car is actually headed to the welder. Um, ironically enough, the day we're shooting here, I'm going over to look at it this afternoon. It's uh, over at my friend uh, Jay Hitchcock's shop, Jay's Hot Rods. Big shout out there for Jay. And we're going to uh, go over and look at it, and hopefully the car will pass. But basically looking at these little examples, reading the CCR, uh, feel free to contact me if you have any uh, NASA-related tech questions, your local inspectors. We'll make sure you uh, pass the flying colors the first time. Now, Jeremy, you've been through this a few times yourself. You had any problems going through your annual inspection recently? 
Um, I don't think so. I mean, I, I, I've prepped a lot of cars myself personally, and uh, I also do a lot of tech in the Southern California region of NASA, so I don't typically have too many problems with people passing tech um, in the SoCal region. Nice. So I think lesson learned here, actually open up the CCR for once, or take a good read at it before you go to your annual inspection. Any questions, give the, uh, the big honchos at NASA a call. And that'll take us here to our first commercial break. We'll come back to talk about Spec Z. Welcome back to Speed News. One of the reasons we brought Jeremy Crosette uh, as our guest host this week is because we want to talk about one of NASA's new spec series, and that's going to be the Spec Z series. I know Jeremy is probably currently busy every single day in his garage putting his new Spec Z together, and we want to ask him how that's going along and where the series is going. How's it going, Jeremy? Oh, it's going great, actually, Rob. The uh the Z that I'm building right now is actually at the Cage Builder. All of the uh, stuff from OG Racing uh, just actually showed up uh, earlier this week. Got a bunch of Sparco gear from OG and uh, all that stuff's going in the car. I'm hoping the car is going to be completed uh, middle of next week. Uh, that's pretty hopeful, right? If you think all that stuff showed up in a box today and it's going to be done by <laughs> middle of next week. Um, yeah, we've actually, we were actually waiting on that stuff getting there, so we got a lot of the other prep stuff out of the way and completed in, you know, in preparation for that stuff showing up. So I think things are going to go pretty quick now. Uh, we're hopeful that we're going to make the next uh, SoCal NASA event, which is coming up uh, in just over a week now at Willow Springs. That's going to be the, uh, the first outing for the car, so I'm hopeful the car's going to make it there. So walk John and I through this. I go down to Nissan, I pick myself up a brand new 370Z. What do I do next? Um, well, you, uh, what you'd want to do then is you'd want to take that 370Z, you'd want to go to a NASA event, uh, get your competition license through the HPD system, and then you'd want to trade that Z in on a 350Z. <laughs> 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 because the 350Z is the actually only car currently eligible for competition in the Spec Z class. Um, the 370 and the 350 are completely different animals and uh, Nissan was more interested in providing a home for the 350Zs to race uh, in a Spec series because the 350Zs really come down in price. Uh, they, they made a whole lot of them and uh, a lot of good donor cars are now on market for anywhere between eight and 12 grand if you start with an 03, 04 model. Um, you can even get up into the $20,000 range if you're looking for the Nismo edition in like an 08, 07 version. But uh, there's a lot of good donor cars out there, so you got to start with a 350Z. Now, because there's a Nismo edition versus the older model, which may be a little bit lighter but doesn't have as much horsepower, what are you guys doing as far as with the Spec Z series to even the competition with these cars? Yeah, so you've got three different versions essentially of the Z. You've got the 03, 04, you've got the 05, 06, and the 07, 08. And each of those versions had pretty much the same equipment, but the engine output, uh, horsepower output from the engine was a little different. So what we've actually done is we've set the spec uh, in the rules per the year model of the car. And you're gonna, you're gonna set the weight of your car based on the year model of your car. So if you're running an 03, 04, you're gonna run at the lightest weight possible. The 07, 08 version makes more horsepower, so it gets to run at a heavier weight. Now, what else comes with the spec series? Like, for instance, in, uh, you know, um, in Miata, spec Miata, you have to have a certain spring rate, certain roll, uh, anti-roll bars. What are you guys adding to this spec series where you are allowed for bolt-on modifications to the car? Yeah, so the, the, the spec Z series is actually fantastic in the sense that there's very little you can do to modify the car. There's a spec suspension kit that you'd get from Nissan Motorsports, courtesy of K 
KW. Um, it's, a K, it's a double adjustable race suspension that comes with a spec spring package. And uh, you order that kit up, I think it's about 2,500 bucks. You order that up from Nissan, you get it, you swap it right onto the car. Um, there's a spec wheel tire package that's a, an 18 by nine for the front and an 18 by 10 in the back. Uh, 285 size tire uh, at each corner of the car. And then uh, you've got uh, some progress, uh, progress sway bars. Um, and again, everything for this car can be ordered through Nissan Motorsports, which makes it super easy. Um, you've got some brake lines you can change out, brake pads, the stock braking system has to be utilized. And uh, man, that's about it. You can also change to a wave track uh, rear differential, um, or you can keep the stock uh, viscous type differential, but uh, I think most will elect to go with the wave track. I guarantee it. So John, what's your predictions? Is uh, Jeremy going to clean up in Spec Z, or is uh, he going to have some problems putting that car <laughs> together in one week? Well, I know Jeremy and he doesn't sleep, so I'm sure he'll get it done uh, right on time. And, uh, you know, seeing the guy drive, uh, I think he's, uh, he's no slouch behind the wheel. So I think uh, Jeremy might have some pretty good success with the uh, class. He is really uh, spearheaded, you know, to give some credit to Jeremy, he wrote the rule package. Uh, he worked really hard on bringing this one to fruition. So this is really his baby and he's going to have... Uh, one of the first spec Z's out there. We've already had a couple running out in the regions, but uh, I think Jeremy's gonna probably make a pretty strong showing, uh, and I imagine we'll see him at Mid-Ohio uh, doing double time in both the Honda and the spec Z. Yep, no doubt, no doubt. Um, I, you know, I wanted to mention to you guys uh, a really cool program that Nissan just announced uh, last week. They're gonna give anybody that races in the spec Z series in June and July $100 just for running in the race. Doesn't, doesn't matter which which region you run in, how many starters you have, or what position you finish in. As long as you enter a Spec Z race in a 350Z, you get 100 bucks. Well shoot, you're a professional race car driver at that point. That's almost free then, 100 bucks. <laughs> 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 All right, gentlemen, that takes That's us to like our next break. That's like running at the uh, circle track. <laughs> exactly. That takes us to our next break. We come back, we're gonna talk about the best track car that you can use for double duty as a street car. State your desires. Speed. Adrenaline. Competition. Calculating. Result in three, two, one. The National Auto Source Association. Start here. Welcome back to Speed News. The automotive marketplace is filled with all sorts of cars. Some you want to just go get groceries with, some you want to take the track and beat the tar out of. A lot of car guys are looking for something that can work double duty, and uh, I want to talk to the guys today about what they think is a really good street car that can double as a track car. So uh, we'll start with you, Jeremy, probably uh, due to the fact you're in the Spec Z series. Let me guess, uh, you're going to pick a Nissan, correct? Well, I, I've got to go with a, a, a 370Z pretty phenomenal car just from the factory right out of the get-go. Now what do you like about the 370 that they upgraded from the 350? Uh, for me personally it's aesthetics. Um, I like the 370Z the way it looks. The uh, little little smaller body. It, it's just, uh, for me it's just a little uh, meaner looking car if you will. Um, I like the fact it's got more horsepower. That's always a plus. Um, but uh, very similar car, uh, very similar in the sense that it's uh, rear wheel drive, front engine layout, uh, has a, a limited slip differential from the factory, good wheel and tire package, uh, great suspension just to horse around on the track, but uh, overall just a great car. Now for day to day street driving with the 370 though, a little tough with the back seat though, right? Absolutely, yeah. Because there uh, isn't one. <laughs> 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 yeah, definitely. You uh, you want a secondary car if you got a family, that's for sure. For sure. Now, John, how about you? I know you've had a few different cars in your stable these days, and uh, what is your pick for the uh, best car on the market right now that would double duty for you? Well, I tell you, Rob, I'm an old, uh, you know, knuckle dragon Mustang guy. I love the new Mustangs. Uh, you know, Ryan uh, Flaherty and I, when we were kids, we had uh, five liter Mustangs, the old 
uh, Fox body with the uh, barn door aerodynamics and the uh, quadrabind rear end. The new one is just so good. I mean, you look at what guys like, uh, you know, Dean Martin with Rehagen Racing, uh, you look at what Chris Cabetto has done with his car out in the Mid-Atlantic region with NASA, and just look at the program that Ford Racing has put together with all the different boss variants that are out there in World Challenge and Grand Am. Uh, wow, what a car, and so easily tunable, and on the street they are just, I mean, just more fun than you could imagine. Uh, basically guaranteed to get you a speeding ticket in two blocks or less, and I, I love that. My kids are still small, I can throw them in the back seats or in the trunks if, a trunk if they're misbehaving, so a uh, good uh, you know, dual purpose car for me. I, uh, I think I'd have to uh, be rolling into 5.0 like my man Vanilla Ice. <laughs> all right, all right. <laughs> well, I looked at that list. One of the cars I looked on there was actually the, the Subaru looked pretty good just because utility-wise, you got the back with the hatch, you can get a lot of stuff in that. Uh, All-wheel drive in the rain is always a good thing. But I think I'm gonna have to agree with you that uh, when you really look at how much the Mustang costs, that's a pretty good bang for your buck. And really, with the solid rear axle, it's very reliable. I mean, you can beat that car hard. And uh, I was uh, lucky enough to get a media car from Ford. They gave me the uh, GT500 and uh, Wow, that was probably one of the most capable machines I'd ever driven. And uh, I'll be honest, I did beat it up as hard as I could and the thing was flawless the whole time. So when you look at what you're gonna get out of that car, okay size trunk, a rear seat, it lowers your insurance because of that. You know, I agree, the Mustang really is a pretty good uh, double duty machine, uh, whether it's autocross or uh, going to the drag strip or certainly road racing in NASA, you know, that seems to be a great, great car. Any other choices from that list in the uh, recent issue of Speed News for you guys? Well, I got I got a, another option, man. If uh, if money's no object, I gotta go with the Z06. It's uh, what a fantastic car that is to drive. Tons of horsepower, tons of grip. Get yourself in a lot of trouble, but uh, man, that car is is fantastic to drive around any racetrack. And then if you want something that's not gonna break the bank for insurance, you can't go wrong with the Honda Civic Si. That's a, a stellar machine in its in its own outright, and you'll have a a blast driving it around any track and it's not going to kill you on insurance rates. What do you think about the Honda, John? Well, you know, Rob, uh, I have to tell you, I think uh, if I had to go <laughs> with a second choice, it would be the Subaru. Uh, we have a, uh, a Subaru Outback in our family, very nice, but what a great car. And I'm also kind of a rally freak too, so I like getting sideways on, uh, you know, the gravel roads out there. So I'd probably be uh, hooning a Subaru uh, as my second choice if I couldn't get my hands on a new 5.0. Well, speaking of going sideways, that's a great segue to go to our GoPro Move of the Month. So, John, why don't you walk us through this uh, first video and show us what we got this month. Okay, well, what we've got this month, this, uh, you know, every month we're going to take a look at different uh, pieces of footage and just uh, among the three talking heads here, just discuss kind of what's going on and uh, maybe help people learn a little bit and also see some cool racing footage. So. This one, Rob, I believe comes from your team, the uh, Kreider Racing Dynasty, uh, your B13 Sentra, a car that I raced and uh, ironically enough wrecked one uh, pretty spectacularly as well. So gentlemen, if we will go to our magic uh, NASA Vision consoles here, and if we could all look at, our look at our video and hit play, and we will see the car is coming in there Looks like everything is uh, going pretty well, and then uh, things go straight to heck from there. Rob, maybe you can give us a little guidance on this one, too. Yeah, so basically that's uh, the work race. That's the first Western Endurance Racing Championship race of the year. It was at Infineon. It was a four-hour race in the rain, uh, which made that a lot of fun. Uh, but one of the things about um, endurance racing at NASA is it's a multi-class event. And so you have faster classes and slower classes. Uh, my class is in the uh, dead as slow class and uh, we're just trying to stay out of everybody's way most of the time. Uh, you can see my co-driver there Keith is coming into turn seven. It's a big U-turn there at Infineon and he's minding his own business, feeling good, looking good. A couple cars come on his inside and then as you can see in the video if you watch it you can see some tire smoke which is always a bad sign because everyone knows when your front wheels are locked you can't steer and then BAM! Uh, one of the United States Touring Car uh, Championship cars uh, nerfs the, the center there and uh, there were some words in the uh, paddock, as you can imagine. <laughs> yeah, I bet. But that's a good example of, uh, you know, you can... I, the best advice I ever got about racing, uh, well, not the best. Uh, the best was always, uh, you know, come in with a lot of money so you can be sure to buy a really good car. Uh, but 
the uh, really good advice I got is when you come into a corner, often it's in like a lamb, out like a lion, because that way you can control your corner entry very well and not get all crossed up and have something like this happen to you, where you take out another competitor and also uh, end your chances at a good finish. So good example here to uh, be a little more patient next time. and. Uh, also, uh, you know, a textbook example of what can happen when uh, someone is not paying attention out there and getting a little too excited about keeping their position in a sprint race. Jeremy, uh, you've been involved in a few wrecks, I guess. Uh, what did you think about the video? Oh, it was uh, pretty pretty cut and dry for me. Somebody uh, somebody just getting into the corner a little little over their head and uh, being a little optimistic on their their breaking point and. Uh, you paid the price, unfortunately, for that optimism. <laughs> <laughs> exactly, exactly. All right, well, the screeching tires from that it brings our episode here to a close. Thank you for meeting us here on Speed News on GoRacingTV.com. If you'd like to see your segment uh, be part of the GoPro Move of the Month, send that to speednews at drivenasa.com. And we'll see the rest of you here next month on GoRacingTV.com. <laughs>